wait for the startup. Okay, so we've still got that problem about the gateway already set up, but like I say, that's probably because we've got two interfaces activated on the same gateway. Um, so let's log in. Let's do an IPA to see the status. So the other, the wireless is still down, but again, that could be because the ethernet is up. Um, Let's take a look at D message now. And we can see from this that we've got no errors now. It says loading firmware RTL8192CUFW.bin. It's registered new interface driver. Oh, that's the kernel. And yeah, that looks like it's okay. We can do D message grep minus i firmware and that looks like that's okay now it should be more in there but it's probably not more because it's not actually active properly so the connection we've got at the moment is via the ethernet so if I do if down Wi-Fi zero. Do that again to prove the Ethernet is the one that's working. Yep. So if I drop the Ethernet connection and now bring up the Wi-Fi connection. So we haven't got the gateway error. Let's do IPA. It still says down interestingly. Right, let me try something else then. Sys, no, etc. What I'm going to do is disable the network connection completely so it doesn't get started at all in case that's interfering. There might be something else interfering, so. Uh, Because the scripts work on looking for something called ifconfig dot something, I'm just going to put some X's in front of that to stop it from being found. I'll reboot. In fact, I'll probably use the scripts to drop everything, but rather than take that risk, I'll just, in case it doesn't work as I expect, I'll just reboot. Okay, so we've got no gateway errors for the WLAN interface, so that's promising. Let's see what the state is now. It's still down. How strange. LS mod. Well, it must be there because the kernel's looking good. Right, th these are the ones I crazy when I was doing the demo. Let me just check. Let's see if there's any differences. With what I've done? No, there's no differences there, so that's okay. Okay, I'm going to have to come back and find out what's wrong with this. 
So I'll be back when I know what's happened. Okay, well it hasn't taken me long to work out what was wrong. Um, when I copied my configuration for the secrets about the access point, um, I must have copied it in the wrong place, um, maybe um, to the host in the live USB, um, because as you can see the secrets file that I've got there is the demo that I was showing when I was showing that it shows the password and the of the pre-shared key as well as the encrypted version of the pre-shared key. So what I'm going to do is to copy the um, secrets file that I used to get this working and put that in there and overwrite that and now I'm doing this dry here. I'm assuming it's going to work. If I do IF down, Wi-Fi zero, and then IF up, then IPA, that's better. I've got an up on the state now. So it does mean that if I ping 192.168.0.1, I'm getting a reply which shows that the um, Wi-Fi is working and if again to prove it if I do IF down Wi-Fi 0 do the ping again networks unreachable because I've got no networking um, if I do IF up on the Ethernet oh it won't work because I've renamed it let's uh, change that um, etc config move that back again so now do the ping yep that's working obviously via the ethernet uh, let's see what happens if I do IF up Wi-Fi zero. So we've still got that gateway problem. It does show that both interfaces are up, so I'm not sure how networking works, if it decides to use one or the other, or if it alternates them, or how it works, or if it's some policy, like a round-robin policy or something, I don't know. Um, but basically, they're both up, ping should work. Um, if the ENO goes down, I've still got the Wi-Fi working and it's still working very well. You'll also notice another thing about Wi-Fi, the, uh, the latency is a lot more. So the, the round trips, uh, one millisecond, whereas on the Ethernet it's uh, less than a millisecond, it's about a fifth of a second to half a second or so. Uh, so it's another thing about Wi-Fi, it is a bit laggy. Uh, so the final thing I'm going to do is just to prove that this works on a reboot. It's always best to check things work on a boot, because sometimes you get things working, you reboot and then they're not working, and you find you haven't configured it quite right. So. I'm going to move the uh, Ethernet configuration file back to its disabled state. And leave the Wi-Fi configuration as the default. And just reboot and make sure that I've got instantly got a connection as soon as I get the prompt. Okay, so there's the prompt, all the 
Um, messages are okay. There's nothing wrong there. So let's log in. IPA. The Wi-Fi is up. The Ethernet is down. That's good. Got a response there. I've checked the DNS is working as well by doing ping. Um, let's say kernel.org. So you can see that the DNS has worked and I'm getting a response from them as well. So that's shown the Wi-Fi is up. So now in theory I could go and carry on with BLFS uh, right from the very beginning. Got internet access via the Wi-Fi. Um, but you can see, as I've mentioned previously, Ethernet is so much simpler, so much easier, less fraught. Basically, if the more layers there are to get something to work, the more complex it becomes, the more chance there is of something going wrong. You can see Wi-Fi has got several layers, several places where things can go wrong, um, which is why I try and avoid it at all times. And uh, I thoroughly recommend, <laughs> recommend you be, do the same, unless it's an absolute requirement that you, you can only use Wi-Fi. So there you go. Well, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it very useful. I uh, appreciate a thumbs up as usual. And please subscribe to my channel if you want to hear more about these sort of things um, as I do new videos. Thank you. Goodbye.